Okay, so for those students that think they could solve this basic algebra equation, uh, many of them are going to take the hard way, the long road to get to the solution. Now, of course, if you could solve the equation, that is great. But uh, actually, there's two other better methods that you should be thinking about when you uh, see an equation like this. But uh, if you can solve this equation, solve for x, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then we'll take a look at uh, all three ways. We'll take a look at a very common approach, which of course is kind of the quote unquote hard way to do, or the harder way to do this problem. Then I'll show you two alternatives, uh, two methods that you should be um, actually thinking about when you see an equation, especially with fractions. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is our equation. We have x over seven plus two x over seven is equal to two. Uh, hopefully, uh, for most of you out there, this is pretty easy. What I'm looking for is what is x equal to, i.e. the solution to this equation. Let's go ahead and see that right now. The solution is x is equal to uh, 14 thirds. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got the right answer, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. You can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving basic algebraic equations. They won't know what that means, but it sounds pretty cool. And who knows, maybe they'll give you $10. You know, whatever you can get for your knowledge, you know, you should. All right. So anyways, for those of you that didn't get this problem uh, correct, no worries. I'm going to show you three methods. And uh, for those of you that, in fact, uh, did do this correctly, maybe you did this in a way that wasn't the most efficient manner. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so here is our problem. Okay, so we have x over 7 plus 2x over 7 is equal to 2. So in algebra, we would call this a rational equation. So first of all, it's an equation, and we have fractions. As this word rational, let me go ahead and write this out here for you. Anytime you hear the word rational in mathematics, effectively what you want to be thinking about is fractions. Now there are some technical kind of um, things about rational uh, expressions and rational equations, but in fact, that's the way I kind of like to have students think about it because in like uh, an algebra course, you know, your uh, most algebra courses, you're going to have like a unit or a chapter on rational equations, rational expressions, and basically you're talking about equations that involve fractions. So rational numbers, this is something you should know as well, is something like two thirds. Okay, it's basically any number that can be expressed as a fraction such that the numerator and denominator are integers. Okay, but I don't want to get overly technical here with you, but you do need to know these names of these various types of equations. But this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an equation that involves fractions. So that's uh, um, obviously the situation. And what we need to be thinking about is, well, how do we deal with fractions in general? Okay, if I'm trying to add two fractions here, I have x or 1x, uh, you need to be, you know, an expert at fractions. So you're thinking, all right, let me see here. If I just had the problem 1 7th plus 2 7th, uh, just take the equation part out, what can I do here? Can I add these fractions up? Of course you can because they have the same denominator. So you simply add the numerator. So we have three sevenths. Okay. And that's exactly what we need to do here. We need to um, add these fractions up, these rational expressions, so we can figure out the uh, next step to solve this rational equation. All right. So we can do this because, again, the denominators are the same. Now, if they were not the same, we'd have to take some additional steps. But in this case, they are the same. So let's go ahead and take the next step. All right, so we know we, are, uh, we can add these two fractions, denominators are the same, so we just simply add the numerator. So one x, or x, right, plus two x is what? Three x over seven is equal to two. 
All right, so if you got to this point in the equation, that is fantastic. And that really is the kind of the main starting point for uh, this equation. All right, is to kind of add these two terms up here. And now we have all of our variable terms on the left and all of our number terms on the right. So uh, this is basically a one-step equation. Okay, kind of, sort of. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm, I mean here in a second. Let's talk about uh, one-step equations. Let's look at a simple example. So this is an example of a one-step equation in algebra. Now, why do we call it a one-step equation? Well, probably because we only need to take one step to get to the solution. So here we have 2 times x is equal to 10. So to solve for x, what we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so 2 divided by 2 is, of course, 1. So that would be 1x or x right here. And then 10 divided by 2 is 5. That is the solution. And we want to keep uh, this in mind, this uh, kind of procedure for one-step equations, because it's something that a lot of students, you know, are thinking about. They're like, all right, I got my equation down to one steps. And now I'm going to show you the rest of this problem here uh, in just one second. But before I do so, I'm going to I uh, kindly ask you, please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. The simple act of you just hitting uh, that subscribe button and that notification button it goes a tremendous way for me on YouTube. So if you get some sort of value out of this uh, content, you know, I would finally, like, I would just be like over. Well, matter of fact, I'd give myself a nice little happy face. Thank you so much. Now back to the problem. All right. So, so at this point, right, we just looked at an example of a uh, one-step equation, something like 2x is equal to 10. So right here, we have a number in front of at the x, the variable we're looking to solve for is equal to another number. So at this point, you might be saying, well, is this a one-step equation? What do we need to do? So we have 3 times x over 7 is equal to 2. Well, we could choose to look at this equation this way, uh, this 3 times x over 7 right here is kind of, can be confusing for a lot of students, okay? But you could think of uh, three over x over, or three times x over seven, excuse me, as the same as three over seven times x, okay? So this uh, expression right here, this term, three sevenths times x, is equivalent to three x over seven, all right? So if I have three uh, sevenths times x, or x over one, I'm multiplying two fractions, I'll multiply the numerators, which is 3x, and the denominators, which is 7, okay? So if you can understand that, you can choose which way you want um, uh, to think about an expression like this, right? So 3 over, 3x three over 7, you could think of as 3 sevenths over x. Now, if you do think of uh, uh, the equation as this fraction, or this number times x is equal to 2, well, this is basically a very similar situation like this one-step equation, right? We have a number times x is equal to another number. Here we have a number, it just happens to be a fraction, times x is equal to another number. So some of you might be saying, well, you know, I could just take one step to solve this equation. In other words, you have this kind of uh, model in mind right here, which is fine, but uh, I'm going to suggest to you this is kind of like the hard way to do this problem. So we could kind of proceed this way, right? Like, all right, we have 3 sevenths x is equal to 2. So I can divide both sides of the equation by 3 sevenths. So I got 2 divided by 3 sevenths. And now I have this kind of complex fraction situation right here, which is what? Well, this is going to be 2 divided by 3 sevenths, or 2 divided by 3 sevenths. So now I just got to do this little fraction problem right here. So that's 2 times, right? I'm going to go from division to multiplication. I need to flip this fraction upside down. So that would be 7 thirds. Now I can just simply multiply across. So 2 times 7 is 14. 1 times uh, 3 is 3. And there is our answer. X is equal to 14 thirds. Now, this uh, method here, or doing it this way, there's nothing wrong with it. And, um, you know, if you're like, no, I get this, I like doing it this way, that's okay, okay? Uh, but you need to understand what I'm going to um, call easier methods, more direct methods uh, to manage equations with fractions, okay? 
But if this is the way you did the problem, still, you know, very good. You got the right solution. And by the way, if you need help with, um, you know, with equations, one step, two step, just in algebra in general, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel um, about algebra. And if you're interested in taking one of my algebra courses, I'll leave a link to my pre-algebra and algebra uh, course. Matter of fact, I'll leave a link to all my most popular courses in the description of this video. But let's go ahead and take a look at a couple other ways we can do this problem. All right, so I'm going to uh, keep thinking of the problem this way, 3 sevenths x is equal to 2. So when you have an equation with fractions, one great thing you can do is multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator. So you have to look at all the fractions involved here. So here I have 3 sevenths, and then what's this uh, number here? This is 2, but it's 2 over 1. So I have 7 and 1 as my denominators, what's the lowest common denominator? It would be seven, okay? So when you multiply an entire equation by the lowest common denominator, in this case it's seven, basically it clears the fractions, okay? This is what I want you to be thinking about, is anytime you have equations with fractions, identify that lowest common denominator and then multiply everything in the equation by the lowest common denominator, excuse me, the denominator, uh, the LCD, and you'll clear the fractions. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're going to multiply both the left hand, right hand, uh, left and right hand sides by seven. So seven times three sevenths, the sevenths cross cancel. I've got seven over one, right? So I'm left with three x over here, and this is two times seven, so that's fourteen. All right, so that's uh, the first step. Now, although I'm taking two steps here, it's just much more direct. So the first thing is, I wanna go ahead and get rid of the fractions. Now I'm left with this nice basic one-step equation. So I can solve for x simply by dividing both sides of the equation by three, and I get x is equal to 14 thirds, which is uh, uh, obviously the same answer we got in the previous uh, steps, but just a much more smooth, direct path, a much more controlled path. So let's take a look at one more way to do this equation, and it's a great way as well. So here is the original problem. We have 3x over 7 is equal to 2. Now, we can choose to write it uh, this way. 3x over 7 is equal to 2 over 1. Now, why would I do that? Well, in mathematics, there's something called a proportion, right? And a proportion is two equal fractions. Here, let me show you. For example, here's a fraction 1 half. Can you think of another fraction that's equal to 1 half? Well, there's a ton of them. How about like 4 over 8, right? 4 over 8 is equal to 1 half. Now, why would I be interested in two equal fractions? Well, there's something called the cross product. When you have two equal fractions, by definition, something called a proportion, uh, the cross product is true. So in other words, here, 8 times 1 is 8. That's equal to 2 times 4, which, of course, is 8. So 8 is equal to 8. So when you see two fractions, okay, one fraction, uh, that's equal to another fraction, you are like, you can kind of say to yourself, oh, that YouTube math man told me these are proportions and I can use the cross product, which is absolutely correct. Okay, so we can solve this equation uh, using what I just did right here is something called the cross product, which is totally awesome. Let's go and do that right now. So I can just go this way, one times three x is 3x, and then 7 times 2 is 14. And now I'm back to this one-step equation, right? 3x is equal to 14. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 3, and round right back to the solution x is equal to 14 over 3. Okay, so again, you know, when you're dealing with fractions, you know, in mathematics, especially, you know, algebraic equations, rational equations, you know, it's in my experience, and I've only been doing this for decades and decades and decades and decades. And of course, you know, I've, I've graded, you know, how many, uh, you know, papers, quizzes, homework, maybe 10 million, maybe not that many, but you get the idea. You see, you know, what works better than, uh, you know, other, you know, what am I saying? I'm kind of stumbling my words here. You see the methods, okay, that are typically the ones that are more direct, more efficient, and kind of bring down the probability of people making mistakes. And that's what math is, all right? Math is a game of focus. It's a discipline of focus. And, you know, when you're taking on a math problem, the objective is to solve it, right? And, you know, when you're doing something like this, there's multiple steps involved. So if you can control those steps, you know, and focus on them and really kind of just, you know, uh, logically 
take one step at a time to get to the solution without getting confused along the way, well, that's the successful way to approach any math uh, problem. But uh, anyways, here's a deal, okay? It's one thing to watch me do a problem, but if you want to get good at algebra, right, if you want to improve your mathematics, you need to practice, all right? So I'm going to encourage you to practice. Again, you can uh, check out all my videos on YouTube or go to my course or just do your homework, whatever it is, practice to get better at math. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.